I have been thinking about snow and the way to get inside it. Like through the entrance of an ice maze during winter carnival, Michigan Technological University's yearly festival of snow, where the Greeks and other student organizations build ice sculptures sometimes 50 feet deep and high out of the snow they pack. This was one of my pleasures as a child, winding through the tunnels they would carve, carving our own in the snowbanks that would sometimes rise above 10 feet high around the yard. Partly this is because I have gone so long without it living in Alabama and now Arizona. This snowless winter in Arizona, I asked my father to send some down from my home in Houghton, about as far north as you can go in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. We get 300 inches a year there. This year they haven't had much yet. Every email I get from him contains an update on how much is on the ground, how much they are expecting, how many inches fell but melted, how many feet have accumulated, how much he cleared with one of his three snowblowers, which are now all in the shop, which leaves him to clear it, or rather move it, as he says. Because in the UP, you don't clear snow or shovel snow, you only move it, you can't get rid of it, which leaves him to move it out by hand, which used to be my job and my brother's job which we did not enjoy, but which we did, of course. It's what the sons do in the winter. 1829, Virginia Lit Museum, blizzard, a violent blow, OED. 1881, New York Nation, the hard weather has called into use a word which promises to become a national Americanism, namely blizzard. It designates a storm of snow and wind which men cannot resist away from shelter, OED. Think flurry in terms of boxing. Think blizzard, a rain of blows. Many meteorological terms make that particular transition. Think fist as force. Think the body as a matter of nature. How can you not miss the snow when you've spent most of your life in the half-year winters of Upper Michigan? It is extremely difficult for professional meteorologists to predict the weather with any accuracy more than four or five days in advance. Though, how hard could it be, I think? Admittedly, everything is complicated, is beautiful and intricate, infinitely recursive when seen closely. A string of tornadoes came through Tuscaloosa and western Alabama in November 2001, doing huge amounts of damage. They decimated a just about to open grocery store next to a community college entirely, but did not touch the college buildings. The tornado system was followed by weeks of freezing temperatures, with over 30,000 Alabama residents without power for days. Which men cannot resist away from shelter. Culture is the opposite of weather, is a hedge against it, is a fight beneath it, is a losing fight, a boxing match, a match struck in hard wind and extinguished immediately. Consider the threat of mass extinction at the hands of one of the trillion comets or mid-size and up asteroids that we will not see until they hurtle right into us, raise a hundred square kilometers of the ocean, fog us over and kill us off. Is snow a lack or a mass? Is it space or pace or page? Silence or a hush, the brush of fingers over paper. The white suggests the lack, but such weight. I used to demand that my brother cover me over with snow until it weighed enough that I could not move. My head would begin to pop out of the padded down bank like a whack-a-mole. My brother would begin to pelt me with snowballs. That weight would feel so good above me. I deserved it, I was sure. Watch my body lose its heat. He'd pretend to run away and leave me there. When I got cold enough that I couldn't any longer tell the difference between outside and in, I'd blink my eyes three times, which meant unbury me, let me back up into your world. There's no such thing as cold in physics, just the lack of heat, of molecular motion, 
of pure and silent space. A flurry is, one definition, the death throes of a dying whale, OED. So think Melville, think obsession, think big and white and gone. And I am gone, and I am thinking about never coming back to the snow country for any appreciable length of time. I'm thinking about snow and structure. Is there an order to it, pattern in it, evidence of God or Adam force? William A. Bentley photographed snowflakes on slides for years. He found regularities, symmetries. The photographs are stunning, lovely, perhaps you've seen them. Some claimed he'd faked them, found an order where there logically was none that they were too perfect and couldn't exist in nature. I am thinking of snow and crime, of snow and drunkenness, number of churches, number of bars, number of county jails, and the ratio between, number of times I've gone through the ice in my dreams. Most snowmobiles can go 60 miles an hour on open, well-packed snow. A fast-moving snowmobile can move over open water for miles until, of course, it can't. 1820, J.Q. Adams, his flurries of temper pass off as quickly as they rise, OED. The storm is a function of temper, the temper of the weatherman or of my father. When my father used to drink, we would be afraid. Not afraid of physical violence, exactly. And there is, this is no different than a fear of any father, but of something else, maybe of his shadow, of isolation, disapproval, one of many sorts of father patterns, of weather patterns. And even seven states away, I find that I still am much to my wife's annoyance, though it, my fear and my wife's annoyance, is mostly Midwestern, contained, implicit. Like nukes on television, all duck and cover, all threat and imminence, all interiority, potential energy on the edge of translation into kinetic. We are all afraid in one way or another of our parents and their judgments, of their wrath, their interest in us, or lack thereof. And now we are separated by 2.5 time zones, over a thousand miles, a couple hundred page breaks, a political party, a generation, and the threat of weather or its end. Yet it turns out, when we look closely, there is more similarity than I had guessed. Even crossing the state line from Wisconsin into Upper Michigan, the snow is immediately a foot higher, the roads not so well graded, the public radio more lonely and depressing, the nights a power of ten darker. Whether this is through some obscure intent or sheer weird chance, I don't know. In a blizzard, we pulled over to the side of the road and listened to the story of the whale ship Essex and its travails, on which Moby Dick was based. Gruesome stuff, to say the least. This weather, this text, this consciousness, this spacing out across the page. Such. Isolation. Such. Staggering weight that can collapse a barn, hundreds of roofs yearly, particularly those that have an insufficient grade. Someone has to push off all the snow, and that someone is the father unless the father designates it to the sons. More weight than all the miles of atmosphere above us. 
more than all the minor matters of the heart that seem so large and gauzy. But it's a good weight, one I have grown to love. So we are not just separated by distance, but by act of God, or threat of act of God, or by the threat of God himself. Is this by choice, or is it accident? There are a lot of accidents. Some result in blindness, others armless brothers, others disappearing mothers, others disappearing lovers, others the ends of lives of boys, and even others incarceration, or a life of snowblind guilt or loss. all of which require new ways of looking at the world, require new ways of navigation, of prestidigitation, which men cannot resist away from shelter. How rapidly do relationships decline? How much space or page does it take around you to drive you to the bar when you've told yourself over and over that you wouldn't go again under any circumstances? Churches are perhaps first a house, the house of God, a roof, a sanctuary, Apex, narthex, model homes for the improvement of our souls, arms stretched out above us, shelter, shelter, a form of shelter. My parents stopped taking me to church when I stole the merit badges from the Boy Scout trove kept in a closet by the kitchen. I felt that I deserved them for so many winters, so much weight borne under snow. So many skills demonstrated, fire building, vandalism, plagiarism, compromise brokering, dodging bottles and bottle rockets, anger management, living through the oblong story of depression, weather and wilderness survival. Eighteen eighty one, flurry, transitive, to bewilder or confuse, as by haste or noise, to agitate. Put out, OED. I have been thinking about snowdrifts and the feeling of falling in them again in my dreams, losing whatever heat keeps the meat of the body alive and twitching. I have been thinking about loss, how each winter is the story of a burial, gradual, and each spring another revelation, a compilation, a complication, until we are up to our necks in north, in enough, in what we feel, what we contain, in what we are contained, in what we barely understand.